Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of CNC. It's episode number 45 and today we're returning with the season finale as our fifth season wraps up today with the final three Serie A games where Brescia could retain the title, finish in a Champions League spot or finish in a Europa League place. It's been that tight of a campaign. Normally I'd say before we get to the games, I'll show you what's been going on off camera. Of course, you saw the last two games in the last episode, the big tuna victory over Atalanta and then a 1-1 draw against Roma where, I mean, I don't want to hate on the guy because without him, we wouldn't be where we are right now. But Esposito missing that sitter with seconds to go to would have won us the game and sent us top. That big draw there means we're three games to go at home against Genoa right now, battling for survival and away to San Siro goes against both Inter, also going for the title and Milan away from home as well. As you can see, we are three points behind Roma with three games to go. Uh, we have the same record head-to-head -head with Roma, by the way. We drew both games, 0-0 uh, to Rigamonti and then 1-1 to Stade Olimpico. So, it will probably be decided on goal difference if we finish level with them. But, with three games to go, three points behind them right now. I don't think Roma are going to lose the title. Inter are actually the closest for only one point behind them right now. And they've got Atalanta away. Tricky test, yes, and no wins in five is poor. But, I think with Cagliari at home and Crotone at home as well, those should be bankers. They be Atalanta. I'm pretty sure they'll be crowned champions. But for the uh, Champions League places, five points clear of Lazio, three games to go. Two of our final three games, if we win them, we'll guarantee a top four place. And we are the first kickoff of the weekend as well on Friday night. Everyone was playing on either Saturday or Sunday. The penultimate game was in midweek uh, away to San Siro against Inter Milan, who again, they themselves are the closest title threat right now, only one point behind Roma. But again, I, as much as I would love to retain the title, we won't give up until it's mathematically impossible. To me, if we don't do it and just finish second, third or fourth, I'll take it. That to me would be considered a good season at the start of the campaign. Champions League football, once again, I'll take that every day of the week. Sense the clash, as you can see right now, Papetti is injured with a pulled abdominal muscle. He'll probably miss both, uh, sorry, all three of our final games, or maybe just two of our three final games. But anyway, he stepped in recently and been really, really good for us in our starting 11. Everyone else is fine though, and this is our team. We stick with the Tiki Taka system we've been using for the last few weeks, and this is our lineup for Daring Goal. About five of Emerson, Sistana, Perola, Armini, Depauli, with Viviani Strike for the middle. Bacardi Sports, Franchi, and his Bozito out top. And on the bench, Mola, Bonifazi, Muru, back on the bench for the first time in a couple of months, Barbieri, De Sisto, Mergia, Vissoli, Zaccagni, Del Monte, Salcedo, Borelli, and Patano as well. First to three, and a win would do us the world a good for the Russia. Genoa are two points off safety. Oh no! I just noticed him in the lineup. Oh, Stefano. He's not actually played that much for Genoa. Of course, we let him go at the start of the season for £1 million. He's out of contract in the summer and I decided to cash in because he wasn't going to play this year behind the Pauli and Barbieri. Barely played at all last season. Stefano. Oh, I'd hate to relegate him, man, but we need the win as much as they do. Sibeli, one of our players of the season. I'd say joint player of the season back in season one. Welcome home, son. Welcome home. But um, yeah, Genoa two points off the drop zone, off safety right now. So they need to win as much as we do. But again, uh, whilst a win would send us top in this game, it really is top four, you know, g good enough for me. I, I don't mind if we don't retain the title. Just staying in the Champions League is vital, man. We know there's a huge difference between Champions League and Europa League. I don't want to fall out of the former just one season in. Oh, Stefano. I love Stefano, man. I don't know where Martella ended up. I'm pretty sure he's in the Serie B, but I'm not entirely sure who he's playing for. But uh, regardless, 23 minutes in, still 0-0. And I talked about the system before. Whilst I do really like it, at times it can be a little bit too slow. And you don't get that many chances with it. And with the first highlight falling to the visitors, that shot from range goes wide of the post. Gennaro in desperation mode, really. A point for them is not going to do them much good, as they'll have uh, a game played more than the other teams around them. So they need to win, and they're playing like they need it as well. At some point, I think we're going to have to go to the gig and press system and, and start imposing ourselves on the game a little bit more because this is just not wielding us anything at all. Half-time, nil-nil. Failed to win this one and we are in trouble. I'm going to say to the boys, assertively, we can still win this, but keep working hard and it will come. And I'll individually criticise the defence as a midfield and say the defence had the ability to change this game for us. I'll tell you what, I'll stick with the 5 2 for now. But I'm going to play a much higher tempo. Tell the boys to be more expressive and mix the passing up a little bit as well. And make no changes to our personnel. Second half to begin. We need a chance. We need a goal. We need a win. 
Here we go. Here we go. De Paoli, 1-2 of Esposito. There's Fabio down the right-hand side. Plays it back to Storaro on a booking. I'll have to be careful with him as he centres it to Viviani. And our number eight, who was amazing last year, a little bit subpar this season, finds De Paoli down this right-hand side with space to cross, which he does. And as Bozita gives it him back, and Picardi <laughs> drills it in and makes it 1-0. He's been quiet recently, but that's a big one. CP14 with 8 for the year, and Brescia take the lead. Yeah, recently he's been a little bit poor. Picardi hasn't been involved in that many goals for us, but this is his best goal-scoring campaign, and that's one of the most important of the season. Picardi drills it in. Bottom corner, Brescia have the lead, but let's just not sit on this lead here. Let's go for a second goal and demand more to the players and see if we can get a second goal and get a cushion. Here we go. Here we go. This is more like it. Viviani back to Emerson, who I'd love to bring back permanently next season as Stefano Storaro finds De Paoli. Set up our first. Might set up the second. But doesn't, but he got the hockey assist as Franchi knocks it down and Sebastiani gets his third in three games. Back to his best, I think. 2-0 pressure. Point should be in the bag. Well, took a while to get going in this game, but that's the problem with this tiki tack because we play at such a slow tempo. At times, we're just not urgent enough with it, but in the second half, upping the tempo, mixing the passing up a little bit, has certainly wielded us the two goals we needed. And De Paoli's been been the man of the moment today. And Emerson, talked about him briefly, makes it free. I'd love to have this guy back permanently next season, even though he's now 30 years old. Brescia frees you know, and it's you know, the Paoli masterclass. And I've talked about it before. This guy is one of those players who, you know, oftentimes he doesn't really do much. But then there's certain games where, oh my word, what a goal by Emerson. There's certain games where he really just does assert himself and he's unstoppable. What a scissor kick volley by Emerson. Paolo De Canio vibes. 3-0 pressure. Points in the bag. Let's bring Muro on for his first minute since that long-term injury. And I'm going to take off Esposito for Patagna. And this might well be Patagna's final game for the club as well. Out of contract in the summer. And I'm still undecided whether I'm going to give him an extension or not. Really... I don't think he deserves one, but letting him go on a free would feel like a bit of a waste, to be honest, as he is still a pretty decent player, even though he doesn't often show it. Anyway, 3-0 pressure, that'll be the final score, and we'll go top at least for 12 to 14 hours. We'll take it. Very happy with the result, and the way you play took a while to get going, but certainly did play well in the second half. So yeah, on the weekend, you got Roma away at Atalanta at 6pm, and that is a big one. If Atalanta beat Roma will be top, and if we win our remaining two, will be champions. Roma again in horrendous form. They've totally choked it, but I, I still believe they'll get back on track. I can't see them slipping up at home to Cagliari and Crotone. So if they beat Atalanta, the title's theirs. So here we go, Saturday, and let's see as Storaro is going to miss the Inter game. That's a big, big blow. Let's see if our rivals, Atalanta, can do us a massive favour. And Atalanta themselves are trying to play for an outside shot of Champions League football. How many points are they behind? Oh, well, there's several points behind. In fact, they can't make it now mathematically. So they're looking for a Europa League spot, which if they're going to, if they're going to get it, they need to win this game. But both teams are in really poor form. Oh, I thought it was 3 p.m. It's 6 p.m. Both teams are in really poor form. Sampdoria beat Napoli there 2-0 in the earlier kickoff. So Atalanta, come on, man. You've got to be buoyed by that. Got a chance to cut the gap and keep your Europa League dreams alive. Ah, and I knew they were going to get back on track, man. I just knew it. I just knew it. 2-0 Roma, their first win in six. Petkovic and Sean with the goals. And I think that now basically all but confirms it. Roma finally back on, back on the winning wagon. Three points clear, two games to go. They win their remaining games, again, against Cagliari and Crotone, and they are champions, both at home as well. Yeah, that, that was the game. We needed our rivals to do us a favour. In the end, they laid down and let them have the win. Sick of them. And Inter just beat Ascoli by three goals to nil. Philippe Downs with a hat-trick there. So that means that they cut the gap to one point. So, again, we're still in it mathematically, but really... It's um, it's it's very unlikely. If anyone's going to topple Roma, it's probably going to be Inter. And as for the Sunday fixtures as well, uh, Juve are away at Fiorentina and Lazio are at home to Bologna. Now, I think unless Lazio win, yes, that's right, unless Lazio win, we would have guaranteed Champions League football with two games to spare. Which again, whilst I would have loved to have retained the title, that would be more than good enough for me. So as we we'll process through here. And see what happens. Lazio must win. Come on. 
Ah, they did. 2-1 at home to Bologna. And as for Fiorentina versus Juve, Lazio now go for, uh, going to fourth place. I'm pretty sure Juve will win that away in Tuscany. And let's find out if they did. They didn't need 2-0 Rabiot with a brace. So we haven't guaranteed Champions League football just yet. We're five points clear of Lazio. But again, win one of our final two against Inter or Milan. And that will do it. So moving on, penultimate game of the season. I can't believe it. Two games to go. And we still don't know whether we're going to be crowned champions, finishing the top four, or drop out of Champions League places at all. As you can see on Wednesday night, Atalanta at home to Lazio. So come on, Atalanta. Seriously, man. Couldn't beat Roma. Couldn't take points. Off, but take points off Lazio and we'll guarantee the top four. We're away at Inter and Juve are away at Napoli as well. Roma are at home against Cagliari and depending on results, I think they could be crowned champions if uh, we and Inter draw and they win that game there. Again, a reminder of the league table, as you can see, we're three points behind Roma. Inter are one point behind Roma and uh, as for the top four as well, we're five behind Lazio. So win this game, we'll take the title race to the final day no matter what and we'll also guarantee Champions League football. Forza Brescia. So into the game, as you can see, one change to our lineup on the back of the suspension for Storaro. It's 5 2 1 2 once again. But again, we all start off at a lower tempo. Uh, Odero in goal, but five of Emerson, Sistana, Perotta, Armini, Depauli, Viviani, and Magia coming in to do the Storaro role. Normally, I go with a kid, uh, De Sisto, who's played really well this season since coming to Sampdoria, but I'd rather go with an experienced player instead. CB14 once again supports Franchi and Esposito, and on the bench, Molly, Bonif uh, Molo, Bonifazi, Muri, Barbieri, De Sisto, Basoli, Gavoni, Zaccani, Dal Monte, Salcedo, Borelli, and Patagonia as well. Second and final game and a win takes the title race to the final day and guarantees Champions League football for the Russia. First highlight, one minute in. Franchi off the crossbar. What a start that would have been for Brescia as Claudio gets up there but couldn't keep the header down. Still 0-0. You'll notice Sandro Tonali is playing this game. Missed a reverse fix. He didn't want to play against us but now he's back in the Inter Milan starting 11 today and he's captain in the side as well. And a good start for Brescia this as Esbol Zito is just over and Juve have taken a lead away at the Stadio San Paolo as well to cut the gap on us to one point. So 15 minutes in, Juve doing their job as things stand still 0 0 nil here and still nil nil between Atalanta and Lazio and we've been the better team in this first half as well Emerson down left hand side as Lazio have just taken the lead at Atalanta there as well as Emerson beats his man and slides through Franchi oh he should have scored he should have scored Franchi denied and a golden chance goes begging can't miss those sort of chances in these sort of games man we've been the better team in this first half and that should have been one nil Brescia and it could have been 1-0 into there right before the break as Milik heads that free kick just over the bar. So it's still 0-0. That'll do it for the half. I think I'll take a point, to be honest. But Cagliari are in front. What? Cagliari lead Roma. What? So as things stand, the gap is being cut to two points. Which means if we win on the final day and Roma fail to match our result, we'll be crowned champions. But then, of course, Inter will still be two points clear anyway. In fact, Inter, I think, will go top if results stay the same right now. I think. Oh my god. Oh. If this is not a lesson for you guys to study harder in maths, I don't know what is, man. I'm so fucking bad at simple mathematical calculations. Right, it's certain I can say to the boys here, we've been a better team here. Just keep on doing what you're doing and we'll be fine. It's what I said in the previous game. Again, once again, I'll change the tactics like I did at halftime in our last match. Play at a higher tempo, mix the passing up a little bit and tell the lads to be more expressive. Second half to begin, still 0-0. There's a winner in this game, though. And if someone does win, if that Inter will be uh, tied with Roma behind on the head-to-head -head record, there is a winner though. And if one of us does win, we'll be going top if Cagliari beat Roma. What an opportunity. Felipe Anderson shoots off the post. Wow. 24 seconds in and a woodwork rattle by Inter. They are going for this, man. They they saw the score on Sky Sports News in the dressing room. They think, fuck this, man. We're going for the title. Sandro Tonali, after last season, wants to make amends. Huge block on the line by Emerson as it remains goalless. But what a start from Inter Milan. They're going at us and Tonali captaining them. You can tell he's motivated for it. Fully expect Roma to find a leveler at the Stadio Olimpico at some point, surely. Yes! And Atalanta have found level against Lazio, which is more important to me. As things stand, if results stay the same, we'll have Champions League football at Arigamonte next season. But we could have it with the title still in the bag as well. What a situation we're in right now. But in the second half, it's been Inter on the front foot and on the offensive. Felipe Anderson tries to beat De Pauli and gives it straight to CP14. We win it back and we'll play out from the back. De Pauli, long ball, Sebastiano, one-on-one. -on -one. Straight at the goalkeeper. 
I don't know what it is about him, man, but on his one-on-ones now, I just don't have the confidence. And Napoli have found a leveller against Juve as well, so Champions League football now is looking very likely indeed. Let's, uh, let's take off our full-backs. Uh, Muri for Emerson and Barbieri for De Pauli as well for more fresh legs and energy with those boys on a booking as well. 15 minutes to go. Come on, lads, I'll take the point. I'll take the point. It'll keep the title race until the final day. As oh, I've just seen the bottom left there. Roma have found a leveller against Cagliari. As Digne crosses and De Rossi said it goes, just goes over. Yeah, Morelos has found a leveller there. It's not come through in the goal update yet, but Roma have got themselves an equaliser at home to Cagliari. So, as things stand, the title race going down to the final day. But one point for Roma is all they'll need to stop us from winning it. But they might need to match Inter's result. But if Inter find a winner, they are going to go top is across to the edge finds Sensei and they have found a winner as well glorious strike from range it was coming it was coming in to take the lead right, switch into our gig and press system for the final few minutes and go into a 4-2-3-1 as well what I'm going to do is take off Parola for Salcedo for the final few minutes swap those two boys around there and see if we can't find ourselves a late goal let's push our fullbacks up to wing backs completely as well and see if we can get ourselves a leveler in the dying seconds failed to get it and insert will be going top and with four minutes of stoppage time it is a highlight for Brescia Mergia de Salcedo off the bench Muri also off the bench finds Mergia and our number 80 finds Viviani got to find an opening and here's Barbieri down the right can you whip it in? It'll find Bacardi. Franchi. Oh, it's a penalty. It's a penalty. It's a penalty. Oh, my God. Esposito. No. Sebastiano. Oh, Cagliari in front. Shit. Yes. Sebastiano. Get the fuck in. Right, what does this mean now? Because Cagliari are winning. Oh, my God. Why didn't I try harder in Mr. Toy's math class? Because I don't know what's happening now. And there's another highlight of a minute. To, I can't take this shit. I can't take it. Do we play for the point? Are we into going top? I don't know. I actually don't know what's going on. Muru. South Sedan down the byline. Change the fucking tactics, you twat. Oh god, um, uh, just, just, stop clicking the same thing. Play, I, I, have we gone top? I think we've gone top. I, 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 I don't even know what I'm doing. Just, just, just push them back a second and calm down. Go, I, we're going top with a win. No, no. No! Oh my god. We've just choked it. After Rinza just choked it. I'm speechless. Unlucky boys, it just wasn't our night. We were seconds away from going top after two goals in stoppage time and then Lukaku scored the final touch of the game. That has got to be the most dramatic finish to a game I think I've ever had. So Roma, despite the loss, a top on the head-to-head -head record. My goodness gracious me. And we still haven't even guaranteed Champions League football yet, I think. Have we? Or have we? No, we have. We have guaranteed it. Oh, of course. We've got a better head-to-head -head record than Juve, of course. So, do we? Do we? Do we? Didn't we lose to them in Turin? I'm pretty sure we lost to them on the... Yeah, we did. But, oh, no, we got a bit head-to-head on Lazio. Sorry, it's Lazio, I was thinking of. We drew against Lazio in the first game this season and then finished level with them in the second one. So, yeah, no matter what, we can't finish any lower than fourth place, even though we're three points behind both Lazio and Juve. So, yeah, Champions League football is guaranteed. But, I... <sighs> that is the most dramatic end to a game I've ever had. My word. Thought we'd won it.
as De Bruyne giving us £50 million for next season. I am so glad that takeover went through midway through the campaign. Oh, yes. But, ah, oh, I thought we'd won it, man. I actually thought we'd won it. Viviani and the Pauli are going to miss the final game away at the San Siro as well. Yeah, on the final day, Roma at home to Crotone. And I, and I said they should beat Cagliari. And then they lost to Cagliari somehow. But they should win that one, surely. And as for Inter as well, they are level on points beyond their head-to-head record. They're away at the Stadio San Paolo against Napoli, to be fair, are going to be going for nothing. They're deadlocked in sick. But either way, that's still not going to be an easy game. We, we would have gone top on the head-to-head -head record. And then Lukaku happened. My God, what a finish. Right, let's do it then. Final game of the season. Serie A final day away to San Siro against AC Milan with nothing to play for. As you can see, a reminder, uh, you've got, um, where are they here? Roma at home to Crotone. A win in that game sees them crowned champions. They should wrap it up today at the Stadio Olimpico despite their choke towards the end of the campaign. And as you can see as well, where are they? Oh, there they are. Inter away at Napoli at 3 p.m. as well. One of the most dramatic seasons I think I've ever had in Football Manager, and it comes down to the wire. So fitting, but we are the rank outsiders. We need to win, and we need a Roman Inter to both slip up, which is highly unlikely. So once again, 5 2 one two, but a couple of changes due to suspensions, and this will be our team. We're daring goal, back five. Emerson possibly playing his final game for the club after his one-year load spell with us. I want to bring him back permanently next season, but on his wages, and Chelsea will still ask for a big fee as well, it's probably quite unlikely. And uh, Sistana Perola, Armenia, the Barbier as well. Mojir and Storaro through the middle. CP14 supporting Franchi and Esposito. And on the bench, Mola, Bonifazi, Muriglio, De Sisto, Basoli, Gavoni, Zaccani, Dal Monte, Salcedo, Borelli, and Tagna as well. Final game of the season. We have to win to have any chance whatsoever for the pressure. I am absolutely stunned by that game. That has got to be the most dramatic FM game I've ever played for any video I've made for YouTube in any series I've done. That was just ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous, man. I can't believe it. We were seconds away. I mean seconds away. Could have been milliseconds away from, win uh, from uh, going top. And a win on the final day, seeing us win the title. Still 0-0, half-time fast approaching. I think the boys mentally have not necessarily given up, but they've sort of accepted it's top four now and no better. Inter are winning away at the Stadio San Paolo. Roma, what on earth has happened to them? Goalless against Crotone. They have spurned chance after chance to wrap this title up. And as things stand, Inter are going to win the title. And Sandro Tonali is going to have his demons avenged of last season. So I'm going to say to the boys here, assertively, I'm not performance out there. Because there is still a chance we crown champions if Inter get pegged back by Napoli and we win. And that's it as well. Like if we win and, and Napoli find a level, then we'll be champions as things stand. So come on, boys. Goal updates finally come through. Oh, it's all Derek. It's a great say there. You might have seen it in the top left. Finally, like half an hour later, we get the goal at the Stadio San Paolo that uh, Napoli have fallen behind. As Prola heads away that corner. Still 0-0 here. And again, a draw or a defeat means literally nothing. Only a win gives us a chance. We've got to get going. Free kick. Brescia. Storaro floats one in. And Sistana denied by a brilliant save, but Franchi turns in the rebound and Brescia have the lead with half an hour on the clock. It might mean nothing whatsoever. It's, oh my fucking word. What on earth has happened to Roma? Storari's free kick, volleyed in on goal by Sistana, great save by Gigi, but the awareness of the number 15 to peg it back and Franchi scores against his former club at his former stomping ground. As things stand, we're going second... But Napoli, come on, find a leveller. If we miss out due to a last second goal by Lukaku, I'm going to be gutted. But that is looking likely to be the case. Napoli have found a leveller! It's not come through yet, but they've got a goal. Dominguez, Muru. Oh, off the crossbar by Esposito. I don't want to change it like I did before. Pressure going top. Um... Right, everyone just calm down. I'm not going to make the same mistake against Inter. Mojir's on the booking. They're taking off of his Soli, the captain, coming on for some experience. And that's all I'll do for now. Nobody say anything. There's a corner for Milan. Pause the game. Just in case.
just don't do anything. Oh my god. Oh. My. God. We've won it. I'm speechless. I'm speechless. I'm absolutely speechless. We've just won the title. Again. Again. I can't believe it. I can't think of anything particular that needs addressing after that, says Giuseppe Rossi. Really? I, can't... I actually can't believe it. I mean... We... We've just won the title again. On the final day, Roma found a leveller towards the end, but it didn't matter because we had the better head to head record than them and Inter as well. I'm speechless. We beat Inter at the Rigamonte and then drew at the San Siro. We drew with Roma back to back, but had a better goal difference record than them. And it's only fitting in one of the tightest seasons. Well, if well, no, the tightest season of the save, it comes down to the final day and three points end up deadlocked on 81. Yet we retain the title. What an extraordinary finish to an extraordinary season. That inter game was the icing on the cake. Claudio Franchi, the title winner for us. Brescia have retained the Serie A. This is extraordinary. I'm lost for words. I'm absolutely lost for words. I'm buzzing. I can't believe it. I actually can't believe we've just done this. All season long, I talked about the need to stay in the Champions League places. And if we give the title up to someone, I don't mind. Back to back, Serie A champions. Unbelievable. Like LeBron on the chase down, we've come from nowhere to block Roma from winning the title. What an extraordinary campaign. We hadn't been top for a minute. And then, do you know what? This is fucking payback, man. This is fucking payback. Do you know what this is payback for? This is payback for Norwich, season one, this year. All right, so Stan, I'll give you a contract in a minute, mate, for that incredible bit of awareness. It, do you know what? He, he deserves a contract. I'm going to give him a contract extension. Well, maybe. <laughs> this is payback for season one with Norwich, when we were outside the relegation zone for 37 games, and then on the final day, we're relegated. This is payback. This is payback. Get the fuck in. No surprises for fans. Player of the season. It goes to our top scorer, Sebastiano Esposito. Once again, missed out on the golden boot, but he won't mind as he fired us to back-to-back -back Serie A championships. I would have thought Franchi would have had a few more votes, but fair enough. Uh, goal of the season was Storari versus Sassuolo. Let's watch that one together. I can't believe this shirt. Let's watch it in all its laggy glory. I think I'm going to have to uh, lower the uh, the graphics setting. I mean, they're pretty low anyway, but... Uh, oh, I remember this one. First time, bang. I mean, you can't really tell. <laughs> I'm going to have to lower the graphics setting. I mean, really, honestly, man, I, 
I don't know what I'm going to do if my Mac does give up the ghost, man. Because I can't live without Football Manager. Clearly, what a season, what a finish. Signing the season, Franchi, 11 mil from Milan. I talked about it at the start of the campaign. Absolute bargain. I don't think loan signings count. Otherwise, Emerson would have given him some good competition. But what a bargain. What a bargain. And I knew it when I signed him as well. I knew it when I signed him. 17 in 34. That's one in every two for the teenage talent with five assists as well, including the final day winner against his former team. Incredible. What a signing. What a bargain. Again, because we signed him so early as well, he will become homegrown and trained by Brescia in three years' time too. you got to love that. And uh, as for young player of the season, no surprise, Sebastiano Esposito. Few would have tipped Brescia to achieve more than continental qualification at best heading into the season, but Brescia confounded every expectation by finishing top of the pile as unlikely champions. It was a season of unlikely yet jubilant success for Brescia, who found form during the middle of the season and never looked back, going on to a competition win few thought possible. Oh yeah. Uh, match the season with our 5-1 win away against Cagliari. I think, to be fair, whilst we didn't win it, it should have been the 2-2 draw against Inter. And the moment to forget was the embarrassing 2-1 loss against Udinese. And when we lost that game, funny enough, last month, I said, that's it now, the title's gone how wrong I was we are one percent away from fitting out our stadium and now we've got the money do you know what? I might actually ask the board today where we can expand the stadium we're, we're a Champions League team now the rigor Monty needs an upgrade as for the five-year plan with Brescia, given to us by Shalino, who's not even here anymore. He must have drafted it up before he left the club in January. Um, the five-year plan is to qualify the Champions League next year and then continue to win the Serie A onwards. So the board now recognise just how good we are. And I talked about it. I talked about it. We're better than the board and the media in Italy predict. We're a top four team, man. We're a top four team. No doubt about it. The season is finished now and it's time to focus on what we can achieve going forward. I think we can qualify with the Champions League next year and we need to come back for pre-season with the same level of ambition. Let's, let, let's, let's, not, uh, let's not get the boys too G'd up. Whilst I think we should be going for the title again next season, let's once again say top four will do. Hey, and Esbozito, one player of the year. Might not have won the golden boot this year, but player of the year for Sebastiano. He deserves it. He deserves it. And as for the manager of the year as well, I'm not even considered one of the front runners. I've just retained the title with bloody pressure. Honestly, my fucking media in this country hate me. I had the joint best win ratio. I... Oh, this is a joke. This is an absolute joke. How how am I not... How how, how am I... I'm going to give it to Nuno. How, how am I not one of the front runners? Come on now. It's Emerson. Hey, Emerson made the team of the season. As in Armenia or Deris Dorado. Esposito and Franchi as well. Well, that is it then. The board are going to upgrade the youth and training facilities. That means that they are going to become state of the art. Um, I actually thought I asked them to... Yeah, I did. I, I asked them to improve the youth facilities during the season. So I guess they're taking it even one step further now. And uh, they're going to go from great to excellent to state of art. So fair play. Board doing without me even asking them to it. And um, yeah, I, I was going to say, I, I knew I asked them midway through the season. So that means, yeah, they'll, they'll jump from great to state of the art once they're officially finished. As will the training facilities as well. Um, we've got excellent uh, junior and youth uh, coaching and recruitment. And you know what? Yeah, we've got 16,743 seats for Rigamonte. We've got the money. We're back in the Champions League. I'm, I'm going to ask the board if they will upgrade the stadium. Where are we here? Build new stadium? Build new stadium? Or ex nah, expand stadium? Uh, expand stadium. Yeah, they're going to do it as well. Get in. Esposito, Emerson and Ordero are going to the European Championships with Italy as well. And as for the play, uh, planned stadium expansion, uh, wow, we're barely increasing it at all. Is there any point? <laughs> Is there any point? It will cost 3.3 mil to increase it by about 1,500 seats. What are we doing? Just adding an extra, <laughs> what, <laughs> row of seats to the back of the stand? Is that it? So what we will do to end the season off officially, um, oh, what am I going to do about these boys, man? I've got a month to decide on whether Basoli stays after captaining us to back-to-back -back Serie A titles and Patagna as well. The rest can definitely go, but I don't know what to do about these guys. I really don't. I like them a lot, but we've got better players in those positions now. And what we'll do is we'll process through uh, the final of the Champions League, which is tonight. It is Man City who knocked us out versus Bayern Munich, who of course won it this year in real life. As Tonali won this area, our best player. But unfortunately for you, Sandro, unfortunately for you, you didn't win the title. Oh, you shouldn't have left us, lad. You shouldn't have left us. Yeah, I'm not bitter. <laughs> We're also going to see the Manager of the Year award as well, I think. 
Um, or maybe not. Maybe not. Well, process through, though. See who wins. And it was Bayern Munich uh, winning it. Oh, my word. Talk about stoppage time goals today of a thrilling 3-2 victory over Manchester City there. We were given £11 million for uh, what we did uh, this season in TV. Oh, that, oh, no, TV revenue. Never mind. But um, regardless, um, there you go. There you go. Quarterfinals of the Champions League. I'm surprised we didn't go down to the biggest overachievers, really. But I guess you've got to remember we are a much better team than we were a couple of years ago. And, um, yeah, that is it. For some reason, the Manager of the Year has not been awarded. But I think we will leave it there. What an incredible finish to an incredible season. Where I did not win Manager of the Year. Snubbed again. What did Fiorentina do? 10th place in the table, oh, yeah. 10th Ten place in the table. Where were they predicted to finish? In 7th. Higher than us. Media, higher than us. And yet, Collier deserves it, and I don't. Get stuffed. Do you know what? I've got one. i got one. It's in my cabinet. No one's taking that away from me. That's mine. But that was today's episode, then. What an incredible finish to what an incredible season. And thank you so much for watching season five as a whole. And the most, well, one of the most dramatic season finales I've ever had in any Football Major series I've ever done. If not the most dramatic season finale I've ever had. I am loving this save to absolute pieces. And it means so much to me that you guys are as well. An extraordinary finish. Brescia somehow come from nowhere to win the Serie A Championship. Retain it. And going into next season... We'll be looking to do it again. Thank you so much for watching the season and the season finale as well, guys. A big thank you for watching. Really, if you have enjoyed it, if you did, then please do drop a like. Uh, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And we will return in the very next episode with the brand new season, season six, at an upgraded Rigamonti getting underway with Champions League football remaining with pressure. And again, we'll be looking to retain the title and win it with a free pee. Thanks for watching, guys. Have an awesome, awesome day. What an incredible season. What an incredible finish. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for a brand new season of club and country as we go for the free pee. Very soon. But by the way, before we leave, can I, just, can I just point this out again, media? Can I just point this out again? Halfway through the season, we were 14 points behind Roma. 14 points and in fifth place. You can all get stuffed. I don't care. We're champions, baby.